It is that time of year again, ladies and gentlemen, where the young up-and-coming ballers battle it out in the NBA Summer League. I'll admit, and I said this last year as well, I don't usually watch a ton of Summer League in general. I'm not a big fan of exhibition games, but after watching the Bulls in their first Summer League game yesterday, and it being one of the more exciting Summer League games that I've seen in recent memory, I just might have to get back into watching these types of games because it's a lot of fun seeing the young talent going at each other trying to show why they belong in the NBA. But anyway, in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the Bulls Summer League opener win over the Mavs and the standout game that we got to see from the Bulls big man and Marco Simonovic. So what's going on, everyone? You're listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Really quick, if you are new to the channel or not yet subscribed, we are now less than 1,000 subs away from 30,000. So if you like the content, consider subscribing as it does help out the channel greatly. And as promised, I will be doing a big giveaway at 30K, so stay tuned for the details on that. Of course, as always, I really do appreciate all the support that you guys have shown. It's why the Bulls have the best fans in the world. But anyway, enough about that. Let's get back into the content. So this was a pretty exciting game. Like for a summer league game, it was very entertaining. It was pretty sloppy at times, a lot of turnovers, a lot of missed shots, poor decision making. So we should call it what it is. It wasn't a pretty game by any means, but that's to be expected in summer league. A lot of these guys aren't NBA players or maybe were once NBA players that are looking to get back into the league. And the summer league is a place that is designed to make mistakes, to learn what it takes to be an NBA player, to maybe be given more of a green light than you otherwise would in an actual NBA game. But regardless of all of that, it was still a fun and exciting game. What looked like to be shaping up as the Bulls getting blown out in this one, I believe they fell behind by 16 early on, turned out to be a great comeback win in which the Bulls forced overtime and won it in OT. And this was really led by Marco Simonovic, the Bulls' second round pick in 2020 and second year man out of Montenegro. Now, we've been talking about Marco Simonovic for some time now, ever since he was drafted in that first year of AK taking over as the Bulls' executive. Bulls fans quickly jumped on this being one of those second round steals that AK has done in the past, like when he drafted Nikola Jokic in the second round. Well, after being a draft and stash player, continuing to play overseas in 2020, Simonovic was brought over to the NBA last season for his rookie year. And although there was a good amount of anticipation for how he would show up in his rookie campaign, it quickly became evident that Marco was not really ready for NBA level basketball and spent most of his rookie season playing in the G League for the Windy City Bulls. And in a few games that he did play with the Bulls, he didn't log a single minute that wasn't in garbage time. But fast forward to where we are now, Simonovic now being 22 years old, and he looks much more NBA ready than he did in last year's Summer League. You've probably seen all the jokes going around about Marco Muscle Watch. Well, in a way, it's kind of no joke. The guy's bulking up quite a bit, going from 215 last year to now 240. Still a little slender for a big man, but he's building that physique to compete with some of the best bigs in the game of basketball. Now. In this game, right out of the gate, you saw Marco being much more active, hustling, being aggressive. Not something we saw as much in last year's Summer League. You can tell there is a newfound confidence in this kid that, hey, even though this is just Summer League, he can compete with the best of them. He finished the game with 27 points on 10 for 19 shooting to go along with 13 rebounds. Six offensive rebounds, I might add, since we all know the Bulls struggled getting offensive boards last season to get those second chance opportunities. He also had three blocks and one steal. I hope we continue to see Marco getting these kind of minutes that he did. You know, last season when Patrick Williams played in Summer League, even though it was clear he didn't belong there, it was good for him to be able to get those reps against some inferior competition to boost his confidence and refine parts of his game. That's what I want to see from Simonovic. Really to see all of that throughout Summer League for him, to use that as a jolt to his confidence, get him more comfortable on the court, taking chances and making mistakes that he otherwise wouldn't have at either the NBA or G League level. This is his time to shine. Soak it all up and learn because the other thing we keep talking about is how the Bulls still don't have the requisite depth in the front court, more specifically at the four spot behind Patrick Williams. And if the Bulls don't have any additional moves they're going to be making for this offseason, say by way of a trade or what have you, it might be good to have an insurance player like Simonovic who can actually be NBA ready this go around, unlike last year, even though we certainly could have used an elevated Simonovic behind Vucevic or playing some backup four last season, considering Pat was out for most of the year. Obviously, there are still a lot of aspects of Marco's game that still need to be worked on, namely his defense. He's still not that quick moving laterally. He's still not the best fighting through screens. 
For his size, it would be great if he could work on his rim protection a bit more. In my view, I still think he needs to work on his shot release as well, getting the ball out of his hands quicker, although he's gotten better at that since last year anyway. And look, he's only 22 still has room to develop further, and who knows, maybe we could actually see him getting some non-garbage time minutes this season. Like, he has a contract with the Bulls. He's not just a two-way player. He is a fully guaranteed deal through next season for the Bulls. You would hope that he's at least able to provide some impactful minutes. And look, I know some people are going to say, dude, this is just the summer league. You really shouldn't be taking anything that you see in these games and thinking they're all of a sudden going to be a great player in the NBA. And then, yes, that's true. I actually probably should have prefaced the Summer League qualifier at the beginning of the video as I did last year. Yes, I get it. It's Summer League. And really, Summer League isn't all that indicative of much in terms of what to expect from players at the NBA level. But Summer League is actually more competitive than people think. Like, you have to remember about 70% of these guys playing on a team in the Summer League are looking for NBA contracts. Some of these players are undrafted, longtime G League players or older players who may have played a few games in the NBA but are now looking to show that they still deserve a spot on an NBA roster. Alex Caruso is an example. An undrafted player got a summer league invite and worked his way up into getting a two-way contract with the Lakers. The point being, these guys are playing hard, not only because a lot of NBA attention is on this and games are being nationally televised, but for a lot, this is a tryout for a dream of playing in the NBA. So I wouldn't downplay, well, this is just a summer league qualifier. The competition still means something. And if you're able to get 27 and 13 in 30 minutes, that's very solid no matter how you look at it. Now, aside from Marco, obviously we have to talk about Dalen Terry, who maybe didn't have the best game offensively. Dude plays with a ton of confidence, though, maybe to a fault at times. Uh, made some very dangerous passes, got a little overconfident with some of his passes, and ended up turning the ball over six times while notching six assists. Not the best assist to turnover ratio, but again, this is what the Summer League is for. You have the luxury of making these types of mistakes and it not really mattering that much, especially when you've already inked a contract with your summer league team. But what I will say is Dalen Terry and his energy, his tenacity, especially on the defensive end, is huge. Like right off the bat, it was so noticeable with how aggressive he was, fighting through screens, pestering guys on the perimeter. The scouting report was always that he's very versatile and a player that plays with a ton of energy, and that's exactly what we saw. Finished the game with 9.6 assists and 5 rebounds. For me, what was great to see was just how excited he was to be out there. And maybe that's easy to say for a rookie player, but it was different in the way that he was getting his teammates hyped, smiling the whole time. He said after the game in an interview that he lives for these types of moments. So even though the skills still need to be refined, even though he's pretty raw offensively, and that may keep him out of some games for the Bulls in this upcoming season, it's the attitude and demeanor that I love that I think will really fit this Bulls culture. The other thing I will add that I think got a little overlooked by fans, and I tweeted about this the other day when it was first announced, but I'm sure you all saw the Bulls officially signed Dalen Terry to his rookie scale deal. Now, some will say, well, wasn't that expected? It's always just a formality. Uh, he was going to sign all along after the Bulls drafted him. Well, the thing is, once a team signs their drafted player to a contract, they are not able to trade said player for at least 30 days after signing. From the time they make the draft selection, they can move the player in a trade to a team of their choosing up until, again, when they sign. The Minnesota Timberwolves did just that by trading their draft pick of Walker Kessler to the Jazz in that insane haul of draft picks for Rudy Gobert. And for the Bulls, they were one of the last teams to sign their drafted player really up until the final hours before Summer League play commenced. Could have been nothing, but it does make you wonder if the Bulls were holding off on officially signing Dalen Terry in the event they were looking to package him in a trade deal. But either way, it's a moot point. The Bulls signed Terry. He's going to be a Bull. And based on what I've seen thus far, I'm pretty happy about it. The other couple players that I did want to call out, one being Malcolm Hill. He was one of the Bulls' two-way players last season. He actually ended the night as the second highest scorer and a box plus minus of plus nine. Was aggressive in getting to the hoop and drawing contact, getting to the foul line a lot. He finished the game with 18 points on four for six shooting, two for two from three to go along with six rebounds. Hill is still a promising player. You know, I don't know if he'll ever find himself on a fully guaranteed contract in the NBA, but it would be great to have him on another two-way deal for the Bulls. And then, of course, the Bulls undrafted two-way signing of Justin Lewis. Decent game. 
played aggressive, which I liked. He finished the game with eight points and five rebounds. Would love to see more from him as you're likely going to see him in some Bulls games next season in a role that we're probably going to need as another forward. But anyway, those were my thoughts on the Bulls' first Summer League game. I may not do a post-game video for all the Summer League games that the Bulls are in, but we'll see. In the meantime, though, guys, as always, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.